Hello, hello, it's Marshall. Thank you very much for tuning in to the show. It's Sunday, December 15th, 2019, and we're coming up on the end of the year, guys. So stay tuned for an end of the year kind of recap, review, etc. on the channel, possibly with a couple of guests that you may or may not have seen before. Anyway, so yeah, I'm Marshall. Thanks for tuning in here. Um, I wanted to do kind of a little bit of a walkthrough video on the Waldorf Kyra and its workflow. Uh, the Kyra was released here this year, and for me, it was a highly anticipated synthesizer. I was very excited when this was announced. Uh, and, and I think I made a mistake earlier. I said it was a uh, super booth. It was actually announced at like Music Mesa in 2018. So th the fact that this has already been completed and is out uh, is pretty cool. And I think it shows how far along it was in its development uh, with Exodus Digital when it was originally premiered. Uh, but yeah, Waldorf has completed it and here we go. So um, yeah, I'm gonna talk about a couple things that I think people may have found a little bit confusing um, and just kind of some of the basics here. I can do more in-depth videos uh, in the future. So if you have any questions or like me to cover anything specific, just leave some comments down below. Um, so yeah, so the Kyra is special because it's able to stream eight pairs, uh, eight stereo pairs of audio over USB along with MIDI, USB MIDI. So you've got USB MIDI and eight channels of audio real time into your DAW. That is unlike anything else. The only thing close would be the Access Virus uh, TI2, which is capable of streaming three stereo pairs uh, through its total integration software. Um, now there is some mucking around you might have to do if you intend to use multiple interfaces, if, uh, especially if you're a Windows user. Uh, I've got a video on the channel about how to set up ASIO for all uh, to be able to basically utilize uh, multiple audio interfaces at once. Uh, and Macintosh, I guess you can do aggregate devices, something like that. I'm not too familiar with that because I'm not a Mac person, but it is possible. And anyway, uh, that in itself is pretty incredible. So it's an eight part multi timbral synthesizer. Now, the cool thing is if we switch over to the screen, uh, we can actually switch. The, the thing is that the multi timbrality and the different parts are active all the time. So as you can see here, as I switch the parts and the part switcher switchers up here, um, you can see on the screen here, I'm all the way in part six, part one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way to eight, right? So we're able to kind of switch these on the fly, which is really cool. But then over here, you have your multi-selector. And uh, right now we were on multi-zero and we go all the way up to 127. So it's really easy to set up a bunch of different multis. And multis means uh, basically each multi has its own set of eight uh, timbres available in the different parts. And so basically you could set up eight, 127 different multis with all eight timbres and basically have like a full set of, of music for an evening. Uh, so if you're playing an event or something and you did a bunch of work on this, you can set up all your different tracks on the different multis with all the different timbres and have it all go through your DAW with one cable. That's pretty freaking incredible. And I think that maybe that gets a little bit overlooked. I don't know. I think it's it's really pretty pretty cool. Something special, actually. So anyways, um, yeah, what else can we talk about? Kind of basic controls. So there is a shift lock button up here. Um, this will activate anything in blue uh, under the main controller. So the black is kind of the initial control, the main control when this is deactivated. When this is activated, uh, the blue text underneath uh, is what will be adjusted here. Now I have uh, f fairly often here forgot that was on and start turning something like I'll start working with the uh, envelopes here and all of a sudden I'm sending uh, EG, uh, EG slope, setting the EG slope or setting LFO two to pan and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> and I'll look up and be like, oh yeah, shift lock is on. So just remember to deactivate that. Um, there's this follow button up here. I highly recommend, especially if you're new to the synth, to activate that. And what that does is as you adjust different controls, like right now I'm turning the filter cut off, you can see the screen automatically updated to that. Now if I come over here and I adjust, say, an oscillator, see it switches right to that. 
So, and I'm in hypersaw mode apparently on this. Right, so um, initializing a patch. Now there's a way to do it in the menu, but actually what I am gonna do here just for goodness sake is we're gonna scoot over to bank G. G is kind of the user user patch. These are all the patches that I created when I was uh, making the patch demo video and the track that I made. But if we go to one that's a default patch, we just have a single sawtooth. Now, the sawtooth uh, is here, and we can adjust this. But you can see as, as that follow is engaged here, if we go to, um, now if we go to filter, and then back to our, yeah, so anyway, follow is a really good one to have on. Um, you also have your arpeggiator controls over here. Um, these are nice to get into the system information. Your multi-details, this is gonna be if you wanted to set like the, the part number. Um, if you're going analog audio out, you could set the part for each multi in here. MIDI channel, volume, stereo pan, etc. All these things are pretty self-explanatory. Um, and we'll go into exit, back into our patch. So there's kind of uh, you know a lot to cover here, and I, I guess I'll, I'll talk about kind of the basic operation to designing sounds. So again, here you've got your two oscillator banks. By default, this sawtooth is is activated, but if we turn that down and then we turn up our wavetable or our square, and then we pulse with the squares here, which that can be modulated, and then a sub oscillator which can be uh, sawtooth, square, I guess these are two different pulse. Well, one's a pulse sub, one's a square, and a triangle. And then this button here, this octave button, if you press this, it sets it to the same octave as your main oscillator. Or you turn it off and it sets it down uh, 12 semitones. So and there's uh, some additional functionality. Again, if you use this shift lock, you can adjust like the tune of your sub, the detune amount, etc. So that's pretty cool. Um, anyway, so you've got all these different banks. Uh, oh yes, there is also uh, an auxiliary oscillator which can be set to ringtone, ring modulator. Excuse me, ringtone. <laughs> A ring modulator or uh, noise and to activate that you can come over here and turn this knob and you can see I've got ring modulator amount is being turned up to change this you actually have to go into the oscillator settings uh, so yeah if you go into basically if you go into the patch mode and you're in the patch editor or the patch edit voice Control here, if you scroll down, using the arrow key, get to page two, then into page three, there's your auxiliary oscillator mode. You hit the plus or minus button. I think it's the minus button will get you to noise, plus will put you at ring modulator. Um, so, and of course, in here, you can see a couple other settings, uh, like for the key mode, hard sync, the amount of semitones for pitch bend, um, portamento. Uh, panorama, which we'll talk about here in a minute, uh, patch volume, voice mode, all that good stuff. Uh, that's in the patch edit window. All right. So, and again, now we've got some ring mod. And to activate that, you have to actually hit this shift lock and adjust your, basically your square here. Now, if we turn that off, Now we're adding in some square. We could turn this auxiliary down. That's pretty cool. So, and then you've got a whole separate bank down here with um, similar controls, except in addition you have uh, you have the detune control here for oscillator two. Otherwise, you have the same sources. You've got saw, you've got saw, wavetable, uh, pulse, and pulse width. Now. 
here's one of the cool things about Kyra, and this is something that I think throws uh, uh, some people off. So let's turn all these down. All right, so one of the coolest features on this synth is the dual mode, which is here. If you activate this, actually, let's just, that's before. If we activate this, what is going on? I've had people tell me, oh my God, we've got a ghost oscillator when you hit that mode and it sounds awful and I don't know what's going on. So basically what's happening is when you hit that button, it duplicates the oscillator banks and detunes one. Uh, and splits it left and left and right. Okay, so what we need to do to adjust that detune is to go into our patch edit menu again and scroll down to page uh, three into dual mode detune and adjust this to taste. If we turn this off and back on. You hear how that just makes things sound freaking awesome? Make sure if you, hopefully you got headphones on or something with good stereo imaging. That sounds cool. So anyway, just to clear any confusion up, uh, the first adjustment, it, that detune amount is going to be fairly high and uh, cause some confusion, but that's how you change that. And then you, then you're good to go. Now, the other thing is there is stereo filters in this synthesizer. Um, now there is, it's basically a Moog style ladder filter with uh, 12 dB low pass, uh, 12 dB band pass, 12 dB high pass, and then a 24 dB low pass, 24 dB band pass, 24 dB high pass. Um, by default, in dual mode, we still have one, one filter active. And there's not a way to activate that second filter, which is kind of a shame. It would really be nice actually to be able to utilize two filters without having a split. But if we, if we turn dual filter on, then you'll hear just out of your left speaker here, some sound. And that's filter one. And then filter two. Oh, you know what? This is a good point. Why don't we hear anything on the right now that I'm in filter two? Because when you go into dual filter mode, it takes the oscillator banks and splits those left and right and gives them their own filter. So we're not hearing anything out of the right because we need to turn up our sawtooth or, a, you know, some type of audio source. Right, now we can... Anyway, so those things are a little bit unique on this synthesizer, and it, I can see why some people have had some frustrations. But again, it, if you read the manual, it explains these things. Um, I think it's it's highly intuitive, but it's not super obvious uh, on first go. So anyway, that's part of the reason why I'm making this video to help help with some of that. But um, yeah. Check out your manuals. You know, they'll, they'll tell you everything you need to know. So I tend to just use a single mode filter because it's a little easier for demonstration purposes and for controlling at this point. But yeah. So again, we've got, we can activate our subs. zero. 
Well, I guess we could just. <laughs> So envelopes, um, yeah, let's set our, our filter on. The other thing is when you're in USB mode, like I am right now, this master volume does not do anything. To adjust uh, volume in this mode, basically you need to adjust volume per patch, uh, per timbre. And to do that, again, we use our shift lock and then adjust our volume. Obviously, that's the same if you're still hooking up with your analog uh, connections, but in USB mode, just know yeah, you're going to need to adjust everything uh, per patch per timbre. Okay, so hopefully that's helpful. Ah, uh, it's just so much fun. I just start going to town on this thing. Uh, but yeah, so that's our filter envelope kind of dialed in. Amp envelope. Now we've got actually two uh, two different uh, envelope generators. One is set to the amp, and the other one is an auxiliary, which you can assign to other things, which um, honestly I have not done yet. Uh, but you can activate it by selecting it here, and then I'm sure you can use your LFOs, etc., to assign different things to this uh, additional amp. Um, again, it's there. I haven't used it yet, but that's pretty cool. And then we have our effects down here at the bottom. Uh, these are fixed, so they cannot be rearranged in any specific order, which is um, somewhat limiting. But the cool thing is, is that they are independent per timbre. So uh, for each multi that you select in each patch, they're going to have their full set of effects separate. Uh, that includes our arpeggiator. Uh, I mean, there's just basically eight different multi timbral or eight different multi voice, you know, fully polyphonic synthesizers in this synth. That is what makes this thing awesome. Uh, the, the flexibility to utilize all that power in a single box and not weigh down your PC with a ton of plugins, or if you're doing a live gig, or if you're going dawless. Uh, yeah, this is going to be something that's pretty incredible to have in, in the toolbox, in my opinion. Anyway, so our, our different um, effects here, we've got our different EQs. So you can adjust like low, mids, and highs in here. You've got a distortion, a slash limiter, a delay, a phaser, which can also be turned into a flanger. Uh, actually, that might be the chorus, which can be turned into the flanger, but there is a chorus as well, and a reverb. So, again, these are all independent per part. Three LFOs, also per patch. Some people have said, oh, that's not enough LFOs. Well, I think that's plenty per patch, and especially if you're wanting to add complexity to the synthesizer, the best thing to do is to layer up. You, know, you have eight different timbres that are readily available at any time to stack up and make some really huge sounds. Um, so that's kind of a, just a basic overview. I guess we could... 
style filter, flanger, chorus, doubler, and that's it. And then some reverb. <laughs> The saving of patches is pretty self-explanatory. I mean, you hit the save button, save again, and then you can arrow down here and adjust your name using the buttons here. As desired, hit save again and save again, and it's saved. So that process is about the most frustrating thing about the synthesizer is naming the patch. Um, I, I truly hope that Waldorf uh, considers making an editor available. I know that, um, well, I should say I recall seeing uh, when the synth was the Valkyrie that there was an editor, uh, and a lot, you know, editor slash librarian. Um, that would be nice to have. Uh, if anything, for ease of patch uh, management, of course, it would be nice to have something to edit on the computer, very similar to the virus. Um, but doesn't, I don't know if that's going to happen. I hope so. So Waldorf, if you're watching, um, we would love to have that as, um, Kyra users. So anyway, guys, this is Marshall. Thank you very much for watching the show. Uh, please leave questions, comments, and concerns down below. Um, yeah. And have a happy holiday. Happy new year. Yeah. That's about it. Talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>